everybody how's it going doctor incompetent here and oh let's play some pillars of eternity so we just finished this heroine quest and now i really want to get to the black meadow and do this side quest uh, because i want to get more people number one but i also want to get better equipment for my frontline heroes who uh, are going to get obliterated without heavier armor. So let me look at the map. Now, I don't know who's at the windmill. I don't think I've ever been there. I don't have cause to have been there, I don't believe. But it's always worth investigating. Oh my. What's this? We know there's more grain in there, Trumbull. Swenier says that. Swainer. A muffled shouting emerges from inside the mill. The first of you drunkards comes through that door, gets a shot between the eyes. Gods hear me, Swainer. I'll put you down like a dog. Come away for now, lads, but we'll be back, Trumbull, and we'll have fair prices, or by the flame, we'll have a reckoning. Uh-oh. We got a problem here. Well, let's go see what's going on. Maybe we can get to the bottom of this local trouble. Help out with the grain prices. An elven man stands before you, his relatively stocky build suggesting a life of labor. His face is pale and drawn, and his eyes wide. Behind him, a younger man and woman exchange worried glances. The miller raises a club as you enter. It shakes violently in his grip. Get back if you value your life. Hold on. I'm not here to hurt anyone. The miller hesitates, then lowers his club. Wait, I know you. You just came into town, right? Don't tell me Swainer already got his claws into you. Gods, that's all I need. Um, I thought you could use some help. Those people seem pretty angry. Really? Trumbull sighs relief. Uh, Hilia's tits, could I use a friendly face? I take it you heard some part of what that crowd's asking for. Grain, as if I've got it all tucked away somewhere. Swainer's been egging that lot on for days now. They've been keeping clear so far, but if things keep on like they are... I don't know how much longer we've got before things get messy. Please, if you're not here on his behalf, maybe you could speak to Swainer... He won't listen to me anymore. Just explain that we're all getting smaller rations now. We're all making sacrifices. Um, I'll go see what I can do. The miller all but sags with relief. I'd be grateful if you did. He won't listen to me anymore, but maybe you'll have better luck. Tell him we're all having a hard time of it. Um, and this is what he said anyway. Okay. We'll be in your debt if you can convince him. Um... I don't think Swainer is going to be easy to convince. And I don't particularly have a smooth tongue. I just have my wizardly ways. Maybe I can talk to a dead person. And figure out what's going on. Um, where in blazes is Swainer anyway? Did he just saunter off down here? Is that him? Nah, that's just some dude. Random dude. Villager. Theophalion. Oh boy. As you near, you feel a vibrant history contained in the essence of this man's soul. Voices from its past seem to call out to you. Or reaching out. You see a pennant waving tall and sluggish in the wind, a rising sun embroidered on the banner, the vanguard of a small troop of paladins. The atmosphere is buoyant, if restrained, and their armor has not yet been tarnished by the elements. This expedition is fresh, young, filled with zest and zeal. At their head stands a commander, awkward in full armor but determined in step. Despite the excitement of his fellows, he does not smile. There's a twist to his mouth, his countenance grim, 
He throws up a hand, halting his troop. Silence falls among them, revealing a dark thunder, deep and low. He orders them to ready their weapons and spread out. Eyes dart from horizon to horizon, necks twisting to see the source of the sound. In the distance, dust and lightning rise from the ground as Stygian clouds race toward them overhead. The soldiers stand, only the staccato movement of their breath betraying their nerves. The commander closes his eyes, calling a blessing down on his troop. Invigorated, invincible, they wait as the enemy draws closer, poised to attack. Step back. Okay. That wasn't good. Um, oh, I'll just step back again. All right, so that's all I can get out of that dude. All right. Not good. Okay, let's keep going. Keep exploring. So, I know that I want to look out for the meanie, but I haven't been to this house, I don't think, so let's just check it out. And... Uh... Can I go? I can just walk into this person's house. This is Afra. What's up, Afra? A dear Woodian woman is standing in front of the fireplace, humming a quiet tune to herself, or perhaps to her unborn child, for she's clearly quite pregnant. She turns her head slightly as you enter. Welcome. Well, finally, I was starting to think. The woman makes a startled noise once she turns around and sees you. Oh, I'm sorry. I was expecting someone else. She gives you a cautious smile. Can I help you? Um, I just arrived in Gilded Vale. Thought I'd get to know the locals. Were you with one of the caravans? She looks at you, hopefully. Master Odemus, by chance? Um... I was, yes, I'm afraid the rest of the caravan was killed. Oh, my God. Please don't tell me this baby's father was murdered. Offris covers her mouth with a hand, eyes wide with horror. For a few moments, she can manage nothing but a strangled, voiceless gasping, her eyes brimming with tears. I knew. I told her it was a dangerous path to take. Oh, this is Kaliska's... Never mind. This is Kaliska's sister. Kaliska was always so certain she could take on any danger. Oh, my poor sister. I'm sorry, stranger. I just... I can't believe she's gone. If only I hadn't called her here. If I hadn't written to her, she might still be alive somewhere. Offra's face crumples, and a solitary tear slides down her cheek. Um, Kaliska mentioned that she thought you needed help. Perhaps I can provide some assistance? Offer looks at you with some surprise before dabbing at her nose with a sleeve. That's kind of you to offer, but I don't know if I can impose this on you. It's not a small favor. Offer wipes at her eyes. I'm worried about the baby, about the legacy. I told Kaliska as much as I could, but all I know is that for a long time now, every child born in Gilded Vale has been soulless, empty. It's happened to so many mothers, and Lord Raedric, he's exiled all of them, calling it a sign of God's, of the gods' disfavor. She sniffs, with my Hathort gone, I don't know how I'd manage if I lost my home, too. Jesus. Um, I hope Kaliska could help me. They say Ranga, the old midwife, knows a way to prevent a child being hollowborn, but she moved south to Anslog's Compass two seasons ago, the journey's too far for me. I can't make it as I am. I don't have anyone else now with Kaliska gone. Please, can you help me? Um, yeah, I can do this. I can really help you out. I'll find her. Offer blinks, eyes wide. You will, oh, God's bless you. Here, I'll give you coin to pay her with. You needn't trouble yourself with that. I think it's a drink she fashions out of, well, I'm not sure, but it shouldn't be too much of a burden to carry back. 
Anslog's compass is what we call the lagoon to the south. You'll have to cross the wilds to get there. That's what keeps me from trying it myself. She clasped her hands together. Thank you again, truly. You'll be saving us both. She sets a hand on her stomach, smiling through her tears. Oh my god. Yeah, I'd like to help a single mother whose sister has just been killed. It's the least I could do. Oh my god. I need some good news in this town. Maybe I could take it that the good news happened with the guy who got killed by the bear. But, I don't know. Um, Alright, where is this? Let me try over here. Let me see if I can just like look around and find this angry dude somewhere. Angry guy. Actually, maybe in the, uh, maybe his location is marked in the journal. Investigate the feud. Well, let's see, where is this guy? I don't know if there's anybody in here at all, but... No, there's two people. Kara Iloth and... Edlian Preston. Who are these people? Oh no. As you near, you feel a vibrant history contained in the essence of this woman's soul. Voices from its past seem to call out to you. Let's reach out. You see a crowded marketplace, vendor stalls lining the road, their proprietor's voices calling out to passerby to come sample their wares. This woman wanders through the throngs, strolling hand in hand with another woman. They peruse the vendor's goods, tarrying at a book merchant with a number of old and beautiful tomes, chatting with one another about what they see. One will pick up a book and show it to the other, who will take it, comment on it, and place it back on the shelf. Then the first will snatch up the book again and quickly pay the merchant before the other can snatch it back. They walk away from the market, weighed down by packs filled with books, still hand in hand, standing close, comfortable and familiar with each other. As they pass down a somewhat deserted street, an object suddenly hits this woman in the chest and bounces off, rolling away toward one of the buildings. Uh-oh. The, the women stop and look at the object, an apple, and then back up at the person who threw it. There's nothing special about him aside from the angry look on his face and the other two apples he holds. Before either woman can move, the man draws back and throws another one at them, this time hitting the second woman in the forehead. He yells at them something derisive and hateful, something about a legacy and about responsibilities. The woman raises her hand to her head and wipes the juice and bits of fruit from her face and stares the man down defiantly. The first woman squeezes her hand and puts the other on her companion's shoulder, attempting to calm her down. The other woman pulls a book from her pack and holds it before her, muttering under her breath. She pulls her hand free and waves it above the book, an aura forming around her. The first woman is still trying to calm her down, but all she says goes unheard. The man, uncaring of the events happening in front of him, draws back and throws the last apple. As it arcs through the air toward them, the second woman brings up her hand and points at the apple. A glowing orb of energy flies from her hand and strikes the apple, causing it to explode, raining bits of apple down on the road and the buildings around them. The man's face changes. Anger, joined by fear, looking like he's trying to decide if running or attacking is the better course of action. The second woman has started chanting again, her hand glowing, her eyes narrowing. This woman steps in front of her, placing herself between her love and their attacker. She touches her face, gently stoking, uh, stroking it while whispering calming words, a kiss. The woman's countenance changes. She calms, her eyes softening, her lips regaining the lost smile. The first woman smiles again as well and kisses the other. Wizard scum, the man behind them says and the two women turn to face him, staring him down defiantly. They join hands and begin walking again, moving past him without so much as a sideways glance. Yikes. All right. Interesting. 
Oh boy. Okay. So this is I do believe something people were telling me about which is that all of these people with purple names have had side stories that have been written by Kickstarters, I believe, backers of the game. And so um, all of these little small vignettes are uh, lore pieces crafted by backers. So um, I'm, I will put it on the screen. Here we go. So I will put this on the screen so that if you are watching along, maybe you can freeze your screen and read this. But um, these are taking me quite a long time to read. And so I might do a separate episode where I compile the lore in the game and read all of these. Uh, but for now, this would take up uh, the entire episode. And so I'm going to just step back and continue and just know in the future that these purple named people um, have a backstory like that and maybe interacting with them like it provides extra lore but it might not be necessarily what I'm looking for uh, time wise for the main playthrough uh, here's Rudolfel Nekator what are you up to dude oh my god now, this guy has a story, but he has a blue name. And I feel like blue names are people who could join your party. You see a pair of immaculately polished leather boots and an impeccably man uh, maintained goatee. Their owner, a slightly hook-nosed man with a wicked grin and narrow eyes, he bobs his feathered hat at a nearby merchant as he ambles by, a small piece of parchment held tight in his fist, ink staining his fair fingers. He seems to know most of the merchants in the market, stopping to engage some, nodding at others, and even bartering for minor goods with a select few, always smiling, laughing, and exchanging jibes. He approaches a heavy-set Ao Mao, a smile plastered stiff across his face, and jokes about the weather. She jokes back, subtly palming him several gold coins. When he walks away, the paper in his hand is gone, and the smile on his face is far more genuine. He tips his cap at her, winking, and trundles off with a new spring in his step. Okay. Um, interesting. And what about this dude? Um, well, never mind. Then I'm going to say um, I have no idea what the colors mean. I thought purple meant that, but maybe it's anybody who has any kind of a colored name. Sometimes games put colors on names... Um, if they're voice acted for uh, people to easily discern who is talking uh, by the color, but I'm not sure. Um, so there's a long story here as well, which I will just kind of briefly place on the screen, but I am not going to read all of this. Uh, I'm looking for new party members. Or for any information I can about this, like, dissident grain man. But anyway, I digress. Let me look at the map. Nah. Um, so there's the road south, which would be to find um, the things to do with the baby. And let's move that way. That seems the far more urgent task than the dude's supplies. Um, I mean, I know that the smith's supplies will help me, but... Kaliska's sister is pregnant, and she's going to have that baby soon. And so I need to get... Um, the items from the midwife as fast as possible. So we'll head this way and see if we can do this. Now we're going to save it. I'm going to turn off fast mode and we're coming into a new area. So you never know what... Yeah, there's wolves down here. Easy does it. Wolves don't really scare me. I've already beaten them, but there could be far more sinister stuff. You never know. 
they're over here. Maybe they won't even fight me if I just sneak by on following the road. They might see my pig. There's a good chance that they will. Somebody almost saw us. Ooh, it's like a wild boar. That's kind of cool. Oh, alright, we gotta fight the boar. Gotta fight the piggies. Okay, so. Hey. Go get this one. Go get this one. Yeah? Um, let's just wait. Okay. We're going to use this right here. And then we can have oh, you drop this maybe there. Okay. Now let's see how the engagement is going. Huh? You are here. And are you fighting anybody? Hey. Okay. Can you knock this pig down here? And then... Um... Boy, we didn't really hit him very hard, did we? All right, and hey then there. we're gonna drop another one, try to hit them all. Yes. And we're gonna drop another one and try to hit them all. Okay, she's been seriously injured. Um, we'll second wind. Hey. And you still haven't even used your ability yet, have you? That's bad. That's not good. All right. Yes. Hey there. All right, and then can you, um, this guy wants to come up on us, so can you club him? Grimoire slam him. Man, she's getting annihilated. Huh? I'd like to, you know, have, she needs to use her ability. Um, hopefully she will. Hey. Apparently knocking it down did nothing. How may I help? You can help by, um, hitting this one. And then, mm -hmm. I'm going to need you to also hit this one. Did you go down? Yeah, she never used her ability. So, I'm going to load the game. Uh, okay. Load the uh, quick save. Yeah. Interesting is all I can say. I didn't expect those boars to be quite that difficult. But I think the problem is that, um, sh you know, she's a paladin and she's lower level. And her armor is just significantly behind what we need. I need this guy to have taken that the brunt of all of those. She got engaged by three boars at once. Mm -hmm. Um and I think I'm also just sandbagging my spells too much. I think I need to use my stuff a little bit more if I'm going to do better. So let's start here and let's just start clearing out like wolves right away, for example. So um hit here, hit here and then let's just wait, see how many there are. Okay, good. And then let's put this here. Hey there. And put this here. All right. Now, who are you hitting? You get this guy? Eh, all right, let's just focus fire. Um. Put this here, like that. All right, we got this thing? Man. All right, everybody, whole party, attack this. Goodness gracious, these are way harder than the other wolves. All right, now we got one, whole party, attack this guy. You can go ahead and second wind yourself.
All right, we got it. We're all attacking. Wow. It was way harder than I thought. But we are making good bestiary progress. All right, let's pick up. I'll just take all that. Pick up this. All right, and we will save it. So at least we didn't have to use any serious Ooh. spells right there. But it's, this is getting tougher than I thought. All right. I mean, it is hard mode. And I probably should have more people in my party. I could go recruit more. But I'm okay. I just need to be a little bit smarter. Where are we? We're here. All right, let's keep going. Oh my, there's a ghost. I guess we're near um, some Adra, so maybe ghosts are common. Oh, we got a dead person. Oh, they have a really nice sword. So I could equip this, right? Like, you know, if I wanted to take off his shield and just use a great sword. Interesting. Well, I don't really know how to enchant something. That's just an option that they're showing. That's cool. Right. I mean, maybe a great sword would be a smarter weapon for her. I don't know. I like having a shield generally with tanks, but maybe that's not the way I should go. Um, Adra formation. Yep, we looked over there. And this quest, um, travel to Anslog Compass. Okay. Let's go down here then. Here we go. So now we're almost getting to, um, oh, we made it. And there's some people down here. Sweet. We made it to... Um, and Slog's Compass, which uh, looks more beachy than I thought. I guess it's a beach marsh type of situation. Interesting. Well, everyone, I think this is a great place to stop the episode. We are uh, through and ready to go try to find this midwife. And we will get into that next time. I hope you have an excellent evening or day. Thank you so much for watching. I'll check you guys in Let's Play Pillars of Eternity here in 2021. In the next episode, take care.